parents. I mean, this this was my wife's um, incident was kind of semi-arranged where one of my friends he basically said that um, you know um, I, I said well I need to get married him. Do, do you know of anything? And he said well yeah there is you know, he shared with me and and, and, and Mona Shafiq's marriage was the same you know in the same way where our friend basically said there's this particular girl there and and, and then we we found we or, or found the girl and then we took the proposal to our parents. So that's different from your parents actually finding because then you can actually choose what kind of mentality, what kind of compatibility, what, what kind of looks you're looking for. Um, and then we've got dating and love, which is kind of um, still in an Islamic environment. It's very, very conservative and, and we still don't um, kind of advocate this. We said that there are three rings in a there are three rings in a marriage. There's the engagement ring, there's the wedding ring, and then comes the suffering. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, and if you're gonna go down that line, um, the dating uh, and, and the love. I mean, if somebody has been dating and, and, and doing, you know, um, are in love for so long, then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said it's not better, uh, the best thing for two lovers is, is to get them married. I mean, if, they be, if they're gonna, if they're gonna can't live without each other, literally, so what you do is, you know, the parents have to be understanding, you know, and um, the, the parents should get them married. I mean, if they've been together for so long, make it halal. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's all to do with kind of understanding and, and negotiating. But you shouldn't, you shouldn't put yourself in that position in the, in, in, in the first place. And, 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 and a lot of these, um, we see that uh, these dating and, and kind of love, um, these don't last and illa mashallah, I don't want to do a blanket, but if you were to put the traditional style and this dating and love style, the, the chances are that the traditional style will um, last because there were elders, people who are more wise, they have chosen this for you. And you know, we are, in Islam, we believe that the love grows afterwards. Dating and love is a very interesting concept where you kind of you trial and error. You know, okay, let me see that guy, is he right? You know, um, so you kind of trial and error so many different people. So, I mean, it's something that really, really, um, because at the end of the day, you're dating and loving, you're thinking with your heart and you're not thinking with your brain. You know that, you know the whole aqdul nikah, when you actually look at the way that the nikah contract is done, it's done like, a, a, if, you, if you look at it, if you study the fiqh books, the ijab and the qubul, it's basically done like a business contract. Do you accept this commodity? Yes, I do accept this commodity. How much cash? I mean, almost I'm, I'm, I'm sounding very, very um, uh, incompassionate here. But if you do look at the fiqh books, the way that the fiqh nikah or, or the babu nikah and the contract, marriage contract is done, it's almost as if it's done in a, um, in a very corporate, uh, mechanical manner as if you're actually buying a product or you're selling a product. It's like that. And it's not because, and some people take the negative connotation that women are supposed to be subservient uh, because we are literally uh, above them. Well, it's not. But what, they, what is the theological underpinning of that is that when you're actually looking to get married to somebody and when you are actually in the process, your commodity should be thought through with your head. You don't let your emotions get, get to you. It should be something which is very emotive, something which is for mechanical and something which you have given a lot of thought. It's not that somebody, you see somebody and you, you know, you, you see her eyes and you fall in love with her and that's, you know, you're, you, you see your whole life, you know, uh, with her. How many people have we seen and say, you know, I can't live without this person, right? And, you know, he says, honey, the person says, honey, you know, uh, I, I love it, you know, I, you know I, I absolutely love it when you're with me. The feeling that I get when you're actually with me, it's almost as though when you're not with me, it's the same feeling, right? So, I mean, how many people we, we see when they say that, you know, like, I can't love with this, with, uh, you know, I, I, I can't live without this person, and then later on, they, you know, they just kind of, the, the spark goes. Why? It's because they weren't thinking with their brains. They were thinking with their hearts. They let their emotions. And, and the fifth books is not, some people have a problem with the fifth book, they're, they're, they're treating the whole thing as a commodity. It's not. What he's trying to say is, that you should look at it from the point of intellect, you know, everything, and not from the point of the heart. The heart, once the, once the marriage contract has, has, done, has been done, then you let the heart take over, okay? With a bit of 
intellect because you don't want to let the heart go frenzied. Okay, and then cyber love and online matchmaking sites. I mean, all of these things they're they're permissible, other than the last one, the forced one. Forced one is haram. There is there is no uh, there is there is no categorical evidence that you will find in the fifth box of the hadith where you say that forced marriage is is, is halal. And 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 people who do um, who have been married through forced marriage, then that's unfortunate. Um, people who parents have done that, then that's a zulm on them. Um, and, and people who are parents and they want to get their children married, then they should understand uh, the fiqh of marriage. Other than forced marriage, all the other one, cyber love and online matchmaking, dating and love, dating and love, um, sorry, that's not halal. I was gonna just give a blanket thing and then people are gonna ask me 50 questions. Dating and love, it's, it's not haram to fall in love with someone. Because falling in love with someone is a matter of the heart. But it's what happens afterwards where you carry out your desire and you start dating and you start going around and you know you start going out. That's haram. In fact, because at the end of the day, love is a matter of the heart. And the ulama they say man ashaqa wa katama wa afa wa mata mata ala darjati shaheed. That the person who falls in love, wa ketama, and he has hidden his love, wa afa, and he has remained pure. He didn't do anything wrong. Wa mata, and out of that he dies of a heartbreak. Mata ala darjat shaheed. That person becomes a shaheed. Why? Because that person has done jihad in nafs. Okay. So falling in love in and of itself, we shouldn't get ourselves. We shouldn't let ourselves fall in love. We should always have that mental barrier, that intellectual barrier before we are married. We can let go of the intellectual barrier once we get married, but if it does happen, then as long as you are not doing anything wrong, you're not carrying, carrying that out, then it's not haram. The best thing to do is go and tell your parents or go and tell somebody that you can, um, that will listen to you and move things forward um, properly. Traditional arranged, semi-arranged, cyber love and online matchmaking sites, especially cyber love and all, you have to be careful that it doesn't become like internet love and chat and you don't start you know, dating each other and sending wishy-washy emails and you know, things like that, postcards, you know, you, you can't, you have to keep it professional. You know, I, I can't, I can't emphasize it enough that all of these things, remember, it's, intele it's, it's an intellectual endeavor. It's an intellectual endeavor. You have to keep it, keep it professional. You can't let the heart come in. You have to keep it professional. Okay. Salatul Istikhara. Salatul Istikhara and its role in determining the perfect spouse. Okay. How many of you who are married have done Salatul Istikhara before they got married? Pick up your hands. None. How many of you are looking for a spouse have have done Salatul Istikhara to... Uh, is there anybody who doesn't know Salatul Istikhara? We need to establish that first. Yeah. Salatul Istikhara is a special prayer where you read a speci special dua and people do it before they kind of... People do it so that they can find some kind of answer or guidelines from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. So Salatul Istikhara is people do it in major issues. You know, I, I had a situation where a brother, or well, a sister phoned me up and said, Mawlana Mansur, I need to ask you how to do Istikhara. I said, okay, tell me why do you want to do Istikhara? He said, I don't know if I should have a baby or if I should divorce my husband. I said, well, if you're thinking like that, then it's pretty obvious you don't want a baby. She goes, well, I want to do Istikhara. I said, look, you, you completely misunderstood what istikhara is. So she went and did istikhara, and she went and had a baby, and then got a divorce afterwards. Okay, unfortunately, so they had the baby, and then uh, two, three years later, they got divorced. Okay. Well, one thing that I cannot um, stress is that salatul istikhara, istikhara. Those of you who know Arabic, istikhara comes from the word khair, khayara. Khair basically means goodness. Istikhara is bad istif'al taken into the 10th form. It basically means to seek goodness. To seek some kind of goodness. 